today's video is the Planck length is nonsense. And we can tell there's a problem with the Planck length when you look at the equations. If you look at the equation for Planck length, Planck time, Planck frequency, energy, and mass, they all have a couple things in common. They have the coefficients g, Newton's gravitational constant, and the speed of light c, plus the constant h. Well, if you notice I said coefficients, and that's because g and c aren't really constant. So that means that any calculation of the Planck length or time is going to be dependent on changing coefficients. And we can tell that g is a constant very quickly by calculating the Schwarzschild radius of the universe based on it weighing 10 to the 53 kilograms, which is the common number thrown out for the total amount of matter, visible matter in the universe, in the visible universe. And when you do that, you get a black hole with a radius of 15.7 billion light years slightly bigger than the observational range of the universe. So we're definitely not in a black hole. So g as a constant doesn't work for black hole calculations at intergalactic scales. And then we also have the missing matter problem, that g appears to be larger inside galaxies and even some superclusters. There appears to be more matter present or a bigger G constant or something, or in reality, a missing force term. Now, the real problem when we're talking about the Planck length is small size. The smallest objects that's actually been measured, where we actually get a measured charge radius through scattering is the proton, which is 20 orders of magnitude larger than the Planck length, 10 to the minus 15 meters versus 10 to the minus 35 meters. So we don't get a measurement, or we, or we don't get a gravitational effect at 10 to the minus 35 meters. There's nothing observed. All the gravitational effects we observe are at the 10 to the minus 15 meter and larger range. So if you talk about what is gravity at these smaller scales, we don't know. There is no gravity. And there is no gravity because the only thing that exists at those smaller scales are quantum fluctuations, which can have shorter wavelengths. And quantum fluctuations don't participate in gravity. If they did, we would be crushed by the energy of the quantum field. And we're not crushed. And you can also think about this in terms of general relativity, because a quantum fluctuation at the Planck length, wavelength would be a black hole. So we would be in space filled with all these tiny black holes everywhere. I mean, just packed full of these tiny black holes, which would make light transmission impossible because light would never be able to get through all those black holes. So it's obvious that we're not living in a sea of Planck link sized black holes and we also know, as I said, quantum fluctuations don't gravitate. So there's no gravity at the Planck length. So anytime anyone's talking about Planck length, you know that they haven't thought it through because there is no gravity there. And there is no limit there. In, in order to calculate the total amount of energy in the quantum field, people assumed that there was an upper limit to the energy, and the only upper limit people could think of was the Planck length. But even that's not valid, 
there is no real upper limit and there is no shortest wavelength to the quantum field. And in order to understand gravity, we would need to know the physical mechanism. And that's the thing that most people don't get. If you don't understand the physical mechanism, then you can't understand gravity. And as I said, it's certainly not curved space around all these quantum fluctuations or it would completely screw up light transmission and change physics as we know it. So the whole curved space general relativity theory doesn't work. And we know more generally that inertial mass and gravitational mass are the same. So the acceleration of inertial masses and all masses measured by acceleration and the acceleration due to gravitational mass must be the same. And in electromagnetic forces we have to treat it as inertial mass. So even acceleration due to electric forces is also the same acceleration to give us the same mass. And general relativity doesn't give us the cause of the acceleration due to gravity. It says it follows a curve, but it doesn't say how two bodies that are stationary get pushed together. What's pushing them and how? Well, it's the same thing that's pushing them when we have problems with inertia and also problems with electromagnetism. But that's another story. We also have the dark energy problem. The assumption that there must be dark energy came about because of evidence that suggested that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. And given the expansion problem aside, that indicates that there's a force. Because if you have an acceleration, you have a force. Force equals mass times acceleration. And if you have one force causing an expansion and another force, gravity, causing contraction, then that tells us that gravity as we know it is the summation of two or more force terms, which means g is not an elementary constant, it's, and it may not even be constant depending on how these force terms vary with distance. And in fact, once we understand gravity better, it will be understood that, that g never was a constant. And plus, since it's the g is a difference of two opposing force terms, that explains why G is so small compared to electromagnetic forces. Almost four orders of magnitude smaller. So putting G in a term to get the Planck length, Planck time, Planck energy, Planck mass, all of that, it doesn't make sense. The Planck length is nonsense. And you can't use the Planck length as a cutoff frequency. And there's also the issue with speed of light, the other constant. The speed of light varies depending on the matter present locally. I mean, we can see that with glass or water when light transmit, transmitted, it slowed down. It changes whenever the dielectric constant slows. And the dial or changes, and the dielectric constant changes when you get near large bodies of matter. So light slows. Space doesn't curve, light slows. That's the way general relativity really works. And so that means the speed of light can't be treated as a constant, and in fact, it's varying all the time depending on the local conditions. And there aren't any photons at the Planck length scale that we're aware of. The heaviest or most energetic photons that we've measured are many orders of magnitude lower in energy. So we don't even know what the characteristics are of a photon at the Planck length, including the speed of a photon at the Planck length. 
because we haven't calculated the regulating terms to determine the speed of light at the Planck length. We know what it is in, in ordinary space where we average over all the quantum fluctuations. But if you eliminate quantum fluctuations, like you would say in a really tiny Casimir cavity, is the speed of light the same or does it become larger? There's something called the Scharnhorst effect where it's assumed that speed of light gets faster inside a small cavity because there's fewer quantum fluctuations. So the speed of light at the Planck length may be a great deal faster, which really changes the way we, we look at the calculation. So as you can see, anyone who's talking about the Planck length within the scope of a bigger theory is grasping at straws. It's total nonsense. And so anytime I read a paper like that, I tend to tune out once they say, well, we have a bunch of stuff at the Planck length and that determines something else. And I go, no, because G and C aren't really constants, especially not at that scale. They may not be anything at the Planck length scale. It, we don't know enough about the real physics to say what it is. And that's the bottom line. We don't know enough about the physics at the Planck length scale to say what's going on. Well, I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please like, share with your physicist friends and subscribe for my next videos. And I do have books where I talk about quantum field theory. My book, The Zero Point Universe and Hunter Gray Slice of Physics. And my particle theory book is Goodbye Quarks, the Indian Theory. And if you buy one of my books, that helps support me in my retirement. And a special thank you to all my Patreon supporters who help make my video production possible so I can be retired and focus on my physics research rather than having to work uh, an 8-to-5 job. Which I, so I appreciate that greatly. Thanks again for watching.